Hello, I'm Mrs Little and today I'm going to be reading you Have You Seen Elvis by Andrew Murray. I hope you enjoy it. Buddy the dog and Elvis the cat were always fighting. Whenever Buddy was eating, Elvis would pounce with a meow and a scratch of his claws. Whenever Elvis was sleeping, Buddy would pounce with a whoop, whoop, whoop and snap of his jaws. Buddy, Elvis, please don't fight, begged Lucy. But they clashed and they bashed and they fought and fought and fought. But even though Elvis was brave, Buddy was bigger. This fighting is wearing me out, grumbled Elvis. I've had enough. And that evening, he crept out through the cat flap and didn't come back. When Elvis still wasn't back the next morning, Lucy searched all through the house and all around the garden. The washing machine, the dustbin, the laundry basket, the bushes, even the hat stand. She looked everywhere. Perhaps he'll turn up when he's hungry, she thought. So she put out a big saucer of Elvis's favourite food, kippers. But still, Elvis didn't come back. Lucy made posters and put them up all round the town. She asked the neighbours if they'd seen Elvis. No one had. Poor Lucy was very upset. Her eyes were all red and puffy from crying. Buddy felt guilty. It's all my fault, he thought. If I hadn't fought with Elvis, he wouldn't have run away. Buddy tried to comfort Lucy. He put his paw on her lap and licked her hand, but she shooed him away. Buddy couldn't stop thinking about Elvis, how he used to wash his face after eating, play with a piece of string, Fight for the comfiest chair. Sleep on top of the television. I don't believe it. I think I miss him, he thought. That night, when Lucy had gone to bed, Buddy squeezed through the cat flap and set out into the darkness. Night! It was a cat's world, all right. Buddy soon realised he wasn't alone. Alley cats were all around him, hissing and spitting and caterwauling. Stupid dog, they hissed. You don't belong here. This is the night and it belongs to us. Closer they came, closer and closer. Wait, called Buddy. I don't want any trouble. I'm just looking for a friend. It's, he's called Elvis. The alley cat stopped. Elvis, they said in surprise. You're a friend of Elvis's. Yes, said Buddy. He's gone missing and we're worried about him. Well, why didn't you say so? The cats laughed. Elvis is a friend of ours too. Come on, we'll help you find him. Buddy and the alley cat searched through the night. Buddy tried his best to keep up as they looked under bushes and cars, on roofs, in trees and in all the gardens and streets and alleys. By dawn, they were exhausted. Oh dear, sighed Buddy. Where can Elvis be? Just then, there was a gust of wind. Buddy lifted his nose. He sniffed. He could smell something. Something that reminded him of... Oh, oh no! Leave me alone, said Elvis. I don't want to fight any more. I haven't got to fight you, Elvis, said Buddy. It's just Lucy's worries about you, and, well, I was worried too. 
Please come home. Albus looked at him suspiciously. Don't worry, Elvis, called the alley cats. You can trust him. So Buddy and Elvis went home. Elvis, you're back, shouted Lucy. Oh, she stroked and stroked him and she gave Buddy a big hug. Now, she said, I'm going to get us all some breakfast. Can I leave you two alone for one minute without you fighting? Lucy came out of the kitchen with lots of toast, kippers and doggy chews. Breakfast, she called. But there was no reply. She peeped around the door and smiled. I don't think I need to worry any more. The end. Thank you for listening and goodbye until next time.